We usually think of the most famous ships that sank to be some of the largest losses of life in maritime history, such as the Titanic, the Lusitania, the Atlantic, the Empress of Ireland, the Halifax Explosion, and so many others. But even with the death tolls, all of those disasters combined, the death toll would not be as big as the worst disaster in maritime history, the sinking of the MV Wilhelm Gustloff. Before we start the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss any new uploads from this channel. And if you would like to support my channel, you can either support my channel on Patreon, or you can check out the Top Impressive Merch Store. You'll find the link for those in the description below. The story of the Wilhelm Gustloff begins in 1936, when Nazi Germany was building a new cruise ship. Yes, Wilhelm Gustloff was a cruise ship, not an ocean liner. Her keel was laid down on August 1st, 1936, at the Blumen Vloss ship shipyards at Hamburg, Germany. The ship was launched on May 5th, 1937, and was fully completed on March 15th, 1938. She then headed out into the North Sea be to begin her sea trials. On March 16th, she was delivered to her owners, Hamburg Sud. She was powered by 4x8 cylinder MAN diesel engines that powered two four-blade propellers that could achieve a top speed of 15 and a half knots. The Wilhelm Gustloff had a length of 684 feet or 208 and a half meters and a beam of 77 feet 5 inches or 23 and a half meters and a tonnage, a tonnage of 25,484 gross register tons and a capacity of 1,465 passengers and 417 crew members. On March 24, 1938, Wilhelm Gustloff began her maiden voyage from Hamburg, Germany for a three-day cruise across the North Sea. And over the next year or so, nothing much event will happen with Wilhelm Gustloff. Until September of 1939, when the Second World War broke out. The Gustloff was converted into a hospital ship. Until November 20th, 1940, when the ship's medical equipment was removed, and her hull was painted in naval gray. Then in 1941, she was stopped at Gotenhaven in Poland, where she sat for another four years before she was ordered to continue transporting refugees and troops. Until an event in, 19, in January of 1945 that would change the fate of the Gustloff forever. In January of 1945, the Eastern Front of Germany had been advanced by the Soviet Union, and this led to an event called Operation Hannibal, where a massive number of civilians were seeking to leave Poland to get away from the Soviets, and that was where the Gustloff was docked. On January 30th, 1945, still docked at Gotenhaven, Poland, Wilhelm Gustloff was going to be one of many ships that used to evacuate refugees from Poland. The railroads leading into Germany from Poland have been either destroyed or blocked by the military, leaving the Baltic Sea as the only way out. As the boarding of the Wilhelm Gustloff continued, the ship had thousands upon thousands of people on board. Eventually, Captain Frederick Peterson ordered the boarding process to only be accessible by tender boats. By the end of the boarding, the Wilhelm Gustloff had over 10,000 people on board, and the ship was only designed to carry about 2,000 people. That means that everyone inside the ship was crammed into every available space. At 12.30 p.m. on January 30th, the Wilhelm Gustloff departed Gotenhaven, bound for Kiel, Germany, with over 10,000 people on board and thousands still at the docks waiting for other rescue ships to pick them up, being escorted and being escorted by two torpedo boats, the Hansa and the Lowe. Unknown to the passengers and crew was that 11 days earlier, the Soviet submarine S-13 departed Finland to patrol the waters off Poland. Commanded by Captain Alexander Marinesko, that night, 
on board the Gustloff, Captain P Peterson became aware that some German minesweeper ships were sailing close to them. So he ordered the navigation lights on the bridge to be turned on to avoid a collision, which made the ship easily easy to spot by a Soviet submarine. At around 9 p.m., the S-13 had spotted the Gustloff and was beginning to open fire on the ship. Baronesco ordered three torpedoes to be fired at, at once. At roughly 9.15 p.m., the first three torpedoes had been fired, but the fourth was, struck in, was stuck in its tube while the others were racing towards the Gustloff. All three torpedoes successfully struck the Gustloff on the port side. One torpedo struck the bow, the second hit the naval auxiliary, auxiliary accommodations, and the third torpedo had a direct hit on the engine room, plunging the ship into a blackout almost immediately. The Gustloff was taking on water fast, and due to the ship's extreme list of port, all of the lifeboats on the starboard side could not be launched. Inside the ship was nothing but chaos, thousands of people trying to get up on deck, and anyone who tripped was trampled to death. Out of the ship's 22 lifeboats, only 5 boats were successfully launched. Most of the boats could not be launched because the davits froze in the cold, and some boats spilled most of their occupants into the sea, which that night was 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Only 40 minutes after the Wilhelm Gustloff was struck, she rolled completely on her port side, leaving anybody who was still inside the ship anybody un unable to get out. Then she started to sink bow first, and just five, an hour and five minutes after she was torpedoed, she sank beneath the surface of the Baltic Sea. Around 9,400 people lost their lives that night, and only 1,252 people survived. After the ship sank, minesweeper ships came to try to rescue the survivors. But the crew on the ships were concerned about the S-13 still being in the area. They dropped uh, depth charges to try to protect themselves, which ended up killing more people in the water. Several weeks af after the disaster, Captain Marinesco of the, of the S-13 continued to, to patrol the Baltic Sea, sinking two other German ships, the SS General von Steuben, killing around 4,500 people, and the MV Goya, killing over 7,200 people. And to this day, the Wilhelm Gustloff remains the worst disaster in maritime history, and the fate of those on board should never be forgotten. Thanks for watching this video, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss any new uploads. And if you'd like to support my channel, feel free to check out the Top Impressive merch store or Patreon. You'll find the links for those in, this, in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.